Hi everyone, welcome to week 12 of English 130. Um, this week we'll be working on your argument section, but before we um, dive into that argument section of your paper, I do wanna review a few items with you. Many of you have noticed um, I added a new document to your English 130 shared folder. If you go to your grading contract, you'll now see a final assessment rubric in there. Let me share with you what that looks like. So the final assessment rubric has all of your major assignments listed here. And then in these blank spots, it will say whether that assignment is complete or incomplete. In other words, I'll indicate what you're missing here. If you are missing an assignment or an assignment is incomplete, you can go ahead and share that assignment with me now. I will still accept any of that work. Um, I wanna be really flexible with you on, on that. Um, but you do have to make sure it makes it in your shared folder or you contact me so we can work something out so I can view that work. Um, you absolutely need a first self-evaluation. That's your first major assignment and we did it together in class in February. So um, if you're missing the first evaluation, um, you need to contact me ASAP to see what we can work out. Uh, as soon as you share work with me that's missing or incomplete, I will update your progress here. Um, then I also want to talk a little bit about the um, critical reader response paper, that optional paper that's due May 1st. Um, if you've completed the first draft of the critical reader response and you've got peer feedback, then you can go ahead and text me and I'll provide you with some instructor feedback on that. Um, I've started giving a few students feedback. So as soon as I know who's completed that work, I'll get started on feedback for those optional assignments. Then let's go ahead and take a look at your work for this week. Um, I do want to share with you a couple examples of comparing sources charts. So here's Rebecca Gonzalez's comparing sources chart. You'll notice she has hyperlinks here in this first column so that if she needs to go back and refer to the original source, check a quote or something like that, it's really easy to do so. I would encourage you to start hyperlinking your sources um, whenever possible. So that just means highlighting it, going to that link. And then if you have um, a title of a major work, a lot of times Google will generate that for you and then you can just create a hyperlink. So you'll notice on Rebecca's that she has a really, um, she did a really good job of providing direct quotes here. And then um, she analyzes in this for this column here to the right. She analyzes how those um, quotes or those authors claims compare with one another. Um, so how they're similar, how they're different, um, really it sets her up to be able to talk about those sources in that argument section. Here's another student, Juliana's comparing sources chart, and Juliana does a really good job here of summarizing the author's claim in the first section here. And then underneath that, you'll notice the example or the evidence or um, the direct quote that sort of illustrates this claim. So those were two really great examples you can look at. There's links on that class plan. Also, if we scroll down here, Here's a Natalie Weiss's uh, mind map for the argument section. She was a student in one of my uh, English 130 sections last semester. And you'll notice all of the questions in the argument prompt are indicated somewhere on this map here. She still has some question marks, so it looks like she still needs to do some research. Like up here she asks, does pop culture promote drug use? and not prevent it, question mark. So the mind map is a really good tool for pointing out like where you might still have questions about your research or any holes that maybe exist. Um, 
So be sure when you're doing your map um, that you're taking that into account and then you can go ahead and find some more sources that help you fill those gaps that you notice. Um, I also want to show you how to submit your work to the Writing Center online this week. Um, that's going to be due before April 21st. Uh, excuse me, April 24th, you'll be required to submit your submit your uh, paper to the Writing Center. So you can just Google Writing Center Chico State. It will take you to the CSU Chico website. And then you'll notice they have buttons here for Zoom online tutoring, handouts and other resources, and then submit my draft for feedback. So that's what we're gonna be using for this class. Click on the submit my draft for feedback. It will take you to this feedback submission form. You'll want to enter your email address, first name, last name, your Chico State ID number, um, which class is this for, that's where you'll indicate English 130. This is going to be due April 24th. You, you should have Writing Center feedback before then. And then this is where you would copy and paste the uh, inquiry paper prompt. And then um, here are some other questions um, about targeted feedback. You can put what you wrote in your peer review memos there, um, and then tutors will know what you need help with. Also, I wanna show you exactly how you'll upload your document because it's, it is a bit tricky. So we'll pretend this is my English 130 inquiry paper, okay? Once you're in your inquiry paper, you're going to go to File, Download, click on Microsoft Word. That's going to download your paper, and then you'll go back into this form, select Files from your device, go to your Recent Documents, and you can go ahead and upload that form, or excuse me, that file. to the form. Takes a couple minutes to upload there. And then you'll notice it's attached right here. You'll submit this form and then tutors will make comments on this document. It's a separate document now than your Google Doc, which is fine. I know that that's how tutors deliver feedback. So you'll have one Word document with tutor feedback. You won't do any revisions in that document. You'll actually wait and continue to revise on your original English 130 inquiry paper with all three sections, significant background and arguments your peer review on there, and then you'll revise on that same document. So even though the tutor feedback is in a separate document, it will just stay there in that separate document. You'll do all your revisions on the same document you've been working in. So I hope that makes sense and clarifies some things for you. Um, the big takeaways this week are just to make sure you get in and check your progress in that final assessment rubric. You're making sure that you're taking care of the pre-writing, including the comparing sources chart and the mind maps. And then um, submit your paper to the Writing Center for feedback as soon as possible. All right, let me know if you have questions. Have a great rest of your week.